Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video we are tracking newly formed Tropical Storm Ernesto and its impacts it's going to bring to the Caribbean, potentially Bermuda, and if it will make a left hook towards the United States and Canada. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin, thanks to TropicalTibbets.com for Monday, August 12th, 2024. The black arrow is Tropical Storm Ernesto on approach towards the Caribbean islands, and it's getting a little bit better organized, as we'll show you in this video. Here's the vorticity signature of the energy and spin of our tropical entity, and right behind it, another tropical wave that we'll monitor as well, but nothing on the model showing that it's going to develop at the moment. So here is the latest satellite image of Tropical Storm Ernesto. You can start to see some of that outflow coming from the outer edge of those uh, clouds. A little bit better circulation, a lot more thunderstorm convection in the center of the storm. So this is looking like a much healthier storm compared to what we saw yesterday when it was just potential tropical cyclone 5. But now it is on approach towards the Caribbean islands. It's moving rather quickly right now, but it is expected to slow down, especially on approach to Puerto Rico as it starts to make the turn towards the north, crossing Puerto Rico and then on its way towards Bermuda. And then from there, potentially even a left hook back towards the United States or Canada. So here's the latest spaghetti track guidance models. Still can pretty consistent up until about Puerto Rico. And then you start to see some spreading out from there at a potential left turn as well. Will that left turn become more pronounced? We'll show you in this video how that could be possible. So here is the latest model intensity guidance showing that the top end of the storm could be Cat 3, maybe Cat 4, but the majority of these take it into at least hurricane strength uh, around the top end Cat 1, low end Cat 2. So let's use the GFS model to show you the track of this storm and the strength of the storm over the next seven days. The black hexagon is Tropical Storm Ernesto, right south of our Bermuda Azores high at the moment. As you can see, we are starting to get better organization because of better outflow. You can start to see the spreading out in the upper levels of the atmosphere of our divergent winds. Some of it going to the poles, some of it going to the, to the west. We're still waiting on one more to wrap around and create that perfect divergence, but we're still, but we're on its way. As you can see, that's going to decrease our wind shear, protect it from this upper level trough just to its north, and that will protect its moisture content from the Saharan air layer as it continues moving in the west-northwest direction and then eventually north. So tomorrow we'll see impacts through the Caribbean islands as this continues to move west and northwestward through them. In terms of peak storm surge around St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. John, Puerto Rico, we're talking about one to three feet. And in terms of rainfall, we could see anywhere between four to six inches, locally up to eight inches in orange. So that's 100 to 200 millimeters of precipitation. Here's the key messages from the National Hurricane Center. You can pause this to take a chance to read it. So by the time we get to Wednesday, August 14th, Ernesto is going to be moving across Puerto Rico at this point. This is where we start to see it slow down just a little bit uh, from its fast pace of 28 miles an hour now. Uh, it's going to slow down to make that turn towards the north because we're going to have that gap in the high pressure. As you can see, the Bermuda Azores highs all the way to the right of your screen here, practically over the Azores. And we have an up-level trough that's going to dig in to that high pressure, creating that valley area with another high pressure over Louisiana, Mississippi. So it's going to go right in between those two and start to move northward. Now we have our fully formed up-level ridge at this point. So we're down to 1,001 millibar low pressure system over Puerto Rico. Low wind shear, high moisture. Off to the races we go. 
So here it is, day five, knocking on the door of Puerto Rico at this point on Saturday, August 17th. It's a little bit slower than yesterday's forecast, where day five we were also uh, at just knocking on the door to, of Puerto Rico. But again, this is showing us a day later, so you can see the slowdown of this storm. That's going to be key to what happens with this potential track. So here's the upper level ridge keeping this storm at a 968 millibar. That's borderline category three hurricane strength. You can see the two dips just to its north and east. You can see that's the upper level troughs that are the first one Ernesto is going to miss, but there's a second one right behind it. So here's the low wind shear environment. Here's the moisture content being protected from that low wind shear and it's going to be uh, plowing through our Saharan air layer. And then there's that upper level storm, uh, a mid latitude storm moving through the Great Lakes that potentially could help swing this storm to the left. So here's the mid levels of the atmosphere five days from now. We have one upper level trough moving to its north and east. So it misses that one because it's slowing down compared to yesterday's model where this one actually picked it up and allowed it to move out to sea. But there's a second one right behind it, as you can see on the left here. So what happens is on this model run, you see it gets a lot closer to the Newfoundland, Canada section than we were yesterday, where it was going a little bit more out to sea beyond the seven day mark. And what that potentially is being triggered by is high pressure rebuilding in. So similar to like we have with uh, a nor'easter in winter time, high pressure over this portion of Canada will block any storm from going out to sea. And with an upper level trough just to its west, potentially this would be a setup where we would see the turn the storm potentially turn back to the left, like we saw with Hurricane Sandy uh, back in 2012. Not going to say that's going to be happening, but there's the setup is very similar to this, where the storm, if it doesn't make the left turn, could potentially just track closer to the coastline. So Newfoundland, Atlantic Canada on this model run would get clipped with Ernesto, but the possibility of New England still in play if it wants to make that complete left turn like we saw with Sandy. So and here's the European model showing uh, it moves a little bit quicker than the um, GFS model and it's a lot further to the east in terms of its track versus the more western track the GFS has taken. So we still have a lot to play with in terms of where this storm can go. It could be safely going out to sea like the European model or go a little bit closer to the coastline like the GFS model, hopefully not making that left turn like we saw with Sandy in 2012. So here's the ensemble models showing those possibilities that widespread after Bermuda of how close this storm can get to the coastline of Canada and potentially even the United States based on the GFS ensemble model on the right side of your screen there. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on this. Obviously, we want to give the most warning to everyone possible. Right now, it's going to be moving through the Caribbean, so they're going to see the impacts first. Definitely, we'll see wave impacts as the storm turns northward, and then eventually, hopefully, to the northeast and out of here. You'll get rip currents along the east coast of the United States as this continues moving north, and hopefully, we don't see that turn to the left like we saw with Sandy. As a reminder, we have super things available on Deciphering Weather. I'd like to give out the shout out to Mike in Florida for donating $5 to yesterday's channel. So thank you very much. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, you can head down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.